No. In MapleStory, there is a concept called Starforce Transferring. This is largely relevant to the Reboot server, the most popular server, especially given the recent protests. Transferring allows you to maintain the Starforce level to a significant extent. The way it works is that you transfer from a lower level item to a higher level item at the cost of one star. The higher level item cannot be more than 10 levels higher than the equipment involved, but honestly MapleStory's equipment set list is not very diverse and most of it these days are becoming increasingly more inapplicable in this scenario. There is one largely relevant scenario that we can consider and that is going from a level 140 item to a level 150 item to go to a level 160 item to get 22 stars, level 22. One of the reasons for doing this is to offshore potential equipment resets, in other words, booms, to the lower level items that are more readily available as a resource to, to spend, to sacrifice, as opposed to the rare level 160 items. Specifically, Kana rings are relatively expendable compared to a slime ring, generally. So therefore, what players often do is they take the level 140 Kana ring, the 21 stars, transfer it over to a superior Golux ring that is level 150. That 21 star enhancement that was original in the Kana ring gets degraded to a level 20 enhancement on the superior Golux ring. The player then enhances it to 21, hopefully, and transfers it again to the slime ring where it will drop again to 20 stars and then they go through the procedure of star forcing it up to 22 stars. The main fixation on level 21 is that level 5, 10, 15 and 20 are always lock levels where you cannot fall upon failure. And that is why players specifically seek out 21 stars in the counter ring to then transfer over to a superior Golux ring because if they fail, assuming they do not destroy the item, they will still stay at 20 until they hopefully reach 21. It's a stopgap that they exploit. The advantage to Star Force transferring is not limited to just offshoring the equipment resets that could potentially happen to lower level, more expendable items. Logically, it should be reducing the cost of star forcing. Star forcing costs enhancement costs in MapleStory scale by level as most other MMOs do. So therefore, if most of your enhancement is done on a lower level item, it would stand to reason that the overall cost of enhancement has decreased because I spent most of my levels, most of my enhancements on a lower level item prior to transferring. Is that really true? Up till recently, we have been using the letter H to denote that upon equipment reset, the seed is to continue enhancing the item that has been reset to a 12 star. In this transferring scenario, however, if the equipment reset occurs on one of the later sets of equipment, either the superior Golux ring, which is at level 150, or the slime ring at level 160, the code needs to roll back all the way to the very first level, presumably, on the level 140 item. This code base has been configured such that it can actually replicate the scenario that we have just discussed and compare it against the vanilla scenario where a player decides to foolishly or perhaps not so foolishly tap from 10 stars to 22 stars directly at the slime ring. At 1 million samples for each of these scenarios, we can see from the cost distribution curve over here that there is little to no difference between the two scenarios. Simulation 1 is the scenario where the player decides to stack up counter rings and superior Golux rings in the hopes of offshoring most of the booms to the earlier level items, and Simulation 2 is simply taking the slime rings directly, attempting to 22 star. As expected, since there are more trials that Simulation 1 has to go through by virtue of attempting more 20 to 21 trials, the number of attempts required to achieve success is less for Simulation 2, where you just tap directly. 
ECDF plots can be taken as plots that represent the probability of success on the y-axis and the amount of currency spent, in this case billions, of mesos. As you can see here, there is little to no difference between the two, even at the 90th percentile. The difference in cost to achieve that between the two simulations doesn't even approach 3 bill. If we construct an ECDF based off of number of attempts, i.e. taps as opposed to cost, we will clearly see that a player that decides to stack counter rings and superior garlic rings has to tap far more within each percentile compared to a player that simply uses the slime ring directly. In the case of 5, 10, 15, the probability of success at stage 5, 10, and 15 become 100%. Despite that, we do not see any substantial difference between the two scenarios. In summary, the benefit to transferring equipment for Star Force enhancements is only tied to offshoring your equipment resets to lower level, more replaceable items. If anything, using the equipment directly saves you money and the lower level enhancement costs end up doing little to nothing to mitigate the additional costs that are incurred from the additional trials that you end up putting yourself in. However, this discrepancy only pops up at later percentiles such as 80%, 90%, and 95% onwards. All of the information was quite insightful and worthy of a comment and a subscription, wasn't it, Sir Agios?